hear the Old Testament reading, taken from Numbers chapter 12, reading from verse 1 through to 13. Numbers 12, 1 through to 13. Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Gushite wife, for he had married a Gushite. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? They asked. Hasn't he also spoken through us? And the Lord heard this. Now, Moses was a very humble man more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. At once the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, come out to the tent of meeting, all three of you. So the three of them went out. Then the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud. He stood at the entrance to the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them stepped forward, she, he said, listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions and I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant, Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant? The anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left them. When the cloud lifted from the, above the tent, Miriam's skin was leprous. It became as white as snow. Aaron turned towards her and saw that she had a defilement a defiling skin disease. And he said to Moses, Please, my Lord, I ask you not to hold against us the sin we have foolishly committed. Do not let her be like a stillborn infant coming from its mother's womb with its flesh half eaten away. So Moses cried out to the Lord, Please, God, heal her. Beloved, the word of God. Our gradual hymn is session and modern 218, 218.
you. Hear the gospel of Christ according to Matthew, chapter 15, reading at the first verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, and 10 to 14. Matthew 15, 1 and 2, 10 to 14. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Beloved, the gospel of Christ. He said, I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our gospel reading for today, the Pharisees and the scribes, who were the religious leaders of those times, sent a delegation to Galilee to check on Jesus. Jesus the young and up-and-coming preacher man who had come to their attention. They sent the delegation to him because according to them, he and his disciples were not respecting the traditions of the elders. They were not observing the rules or rituals concerning hand washing, something we can relate to today in our pandemic era. He was also not observing the rules when it comes to things that are clean and unclean. Jesus did not deny the accusation, but pointed out to them that their focus on the traditions of the elders had gone to such extremes that even the practice of those traditions were held in higher esteem than the commands of God. And this meant that they had gotten it wrong. Washing of hands, as important as it was for hygiene purposes, was not what defiled a person, but rather what took place within a person's mind and heart, our intentions, our motives, and our thoughts. And so, their focus on the performance of external requirements for its own sake instead of reinforcing the reason for the command, was leading the people astray. In the words of Jesus, they were specializing on the how, the rituals, and not understanding the why, the reason for the commands of God, the letter and the spirit. The spirit behind God's commands are that we should act out of good hearts, My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, being clean or unclean is not about what we eat or touch, but rather what comes out of our mouths. And so Psalm 51, which is the psalm for this morning's service, speaks to that. But how important it is for us to get it right within, create within us a right spirit. A broken and a contrite heart will thou not despise. The epistle from James chapter 3 and also 1 to 12, which I would want you to read 
for your homework. James 3, 1 to 12, and Psalm 51 speak to the matter. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, words come out of our mouth. And the words that come out of our mouths give voice to what is within us. It is only God who knows our hearts and intentions. However, we get to know as human beings what is stored in a person's heart and thoughts when the words are expressed. As scripture says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Luke 6, 4. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, words that are spoken cannot be taken back. They are like the wind, like the spirit, and they take on a life of their own. Our words can kill. Our words can damage others. Our words can incite hatred. Our words can put people down. Our words can cause wars and horrible things to happen. For words reveal deep-seated beliefs until a person speaks. You don't know what they have. So how can you correct them? Words reveal deep-seated resentment, hatred, and emotions, like we saw in our first reading from Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. And these were siblings of Moses. Siblings of Moses who had come into grace because of the action of the Lord on the life of Moses. And so they were chosen as priests and prophets to assist their own brother fulfill God's commandments. And yet, Aaron and Miriam resented the position of Moses. To all intents and purposes, as we heard in the reading, they were criticizing him for having married a Cushite woman. And a Cushite is described as a black woman or an African person. And so they were being racist. He had gone out of his way to bring this unworthy person into the family. But that was not the real issue. It was only a symptom. The real issue was that Aaron and Miriam were envious and jealous of their brother. She was older, if you remember. She kept watch over his basket. And Aaron was more of an orator than Moses. For Moses said to the Lord, I cannot speak. And so in accusing him of having married the Cushite woman, the real intention came out. And they said, after all, is it only Moses that God speaks to? And the word of God says, and God heard. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we must be mindful of what we store in our hearts, the things we think or say, for God will hear us. God therefore summoned them into the tent of meeting and he punished Miriam by visiting her with leprosy. Aaron in horror and repentance immediately appeals to Moses to pray for her. And the word of God says, and Moses being a humble man, a man with a beautiful interior, a man with a beautiful spirit within, prayed for her. And again, God heard. And he answered the prayer of Moses favorably. In the Psalm 51, we realize that after David sinned, committed adultery with Bathsheba and killed Uriah, her husband. After his fault was pointed out to him, he expressed the words of sorrow and repentance. And again, 
God heard him. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we must use our words positively to encourage and support our brothers and sisters. Being clean or unclean is not about what we eat or put in our mouth. It's not about the externals, but the interior. What comes out of us? What comes out of us? Our hearts, our thoughts, and our intentions. Those are the things that God looks at. For dear friends, out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouths will speak. And so let us be mindful of what our true thoughts and intentions are. What we hold in our hearts before we open our mouths and spew venom and bring trouble and confusion to our world and to our brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on the occasion of the first anniversary of the passing of our dear mother, Estricia, a year ago, our brother Noel, 25 years ago, and our brother Mark, two years ago, we have gathered here this morning in thanksgiving for the gifts of their lives and the impact of their lives on us. A year on, it is not still very easy to cope because we love them. We wanted them to be around for much longer. But God knows best. In his wisdom, he has called them unto himself. And so we have gathered here this morning thanksgiving that he gave them to us for a season, that they impacted our lives so positively, and that today we will go and mark their final place of rest with a tombstone. But the love we have for them, the memories will still remain in our hearts. And I want you to cast your minds back a year ago and the tributes that you read about them and the things that you said had impacted your lives because of them. And the question I put to you is, are you practicing the good things that you yourselves mentioned about their lives? Today, as we reflect, let us call to mind those positive things they left us with. And let us also console ourselves with the fact that because they believed in Jesus Christ, they are at rest. They are asleep. They have gone ahead of us, waiting for us to follow up and to join them. May the Lord hear our prayers that we make for them this morning and continue to keep them in his blessed rest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the quiet of our hearts, let us pray. It is not about the externals. The washing of hands and what we put in, into our mouths. But it is about our intentions, our motives, our thoughts, our interior being the good heart that we have before the Lord. We must be mindful of the words we speak. Rather, we must speak to encourage, to uplift, to support. If we have used any words that are untoward towards our brothers or sisters, this morning let us repent 
And like David, ask God to renew a right spirit within us. Let us thank God for the gift of our lives, for our loved ones, for having brought us yet to the beginning of another week. Let us commit the work of our hands, our businesses, unto his care. Let us pray and ask for his loving providence, his protection. Let us bring our nation before the throne of grace, pray for his peace, pray for the right leadership, pray for the world, for the challenges that we are confronted with, Let us turn our hearts and our minds unto God. Finally, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray for our own selves. We have come into the presence of the living God. He loves to hear us when we pray. Let us come to him in faith, and he will answer our prayer. Let us together say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please let us humble our heads and ask for God's blessings. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you this morning. Surround you and your loved ones today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, the Mass is ended. Go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Our recessional hymn is Session Term Odin 700 700.